You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. For more information, please visit ftserussell.com, cboe.com, and cmegroup.com. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means it is Thursday. It is 1.30 p.m. Central, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. It is time once again for TWIFO this week in Futures Options, the program where the name says it all, listeners. You break down the week that was and indeed still is in all of your favorite futures options products. We'll talk maybe some metals, some equities, some ag, some rates, some energy. You never know what's going to make it on the show. Maybe some crypto. Who knows? was going to sneak in there. Probably not FX unless something's really popping off out there, but we're not averse to talking about it. Whatever is lighting it up over there on the CME platform this week, we'll probably try to break it down. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. So as of course, from the ever compelling Options Insider Radio Network. Of course, a lot of fun stuff to be found over there on the website. If you haven't been there in a little bit, a lot of great data, including a lot of you out there love to trade Equity options around earnings season, all the great earnings move, earnings season, earnings move results reports for you guys, all available completely for free for the entire season over there, theoptionsinsider.com. Of course, if you'd like to engage more actively on the audio front, we have the Options Insider Plus and Options Insider Pro for all of you folks out there as well. The Plus gets you live engagement throughout the week with all the shows that we do. You can join in there with the with the great crew over there. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond the great Q&A sessions we have there, with all sorts of leading minds from the world of derivatives, as well as our Options Oddities program. Every Friday, we break down all the crazy madness going on in the world of unusual options activity. Then head on over there to the pro. And of course, however you listen, there are literally more platforms carrying these shows almost every day. It's kind of getting out of hand, but we love it. The more the merrier out there, we always say. There's a new platform and podcast platform, seems like every other day out there these days. And they all want to carry our stuff. It's a good problem to have. 
out there. So you have no shortage of ways to find this content. If you listen on demand, we ask you to keep rating and reviewing wherever you get, especially on the new platforms. It helps new folks discover all the stuff. And of course, keep sending those questions in. We do love to hear from all of you guys and gals out there today. We're just hearing from me today, taking a little bit of a break from the hot seats today. Going to go just the facts. Going to go hard at the data and the analysis. And let's kick it off the way we always do with the Movers and Shakers Report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the Movers and Shakers Report. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Movers and Shakers Report, the portion of the show. We break down exactly that. What the heck is moving and shaking to the upside, a.k.a. the light side, and to the dark side over there at CME this week? If you'd like to see these reports for yourselves, Follow the folks over there at CME. They always tweet it out before showtime. We, of course, retweet it. So if you're following us, you'll get access to it, too. Otherwise, you need the premium tools over there at Quick Strike, which, by the way, if you're a Quick Strike user, you see a new coat of paint out there. They added some new bells and whistles to the platform. I was just going over some of those with Nick before the showtime so I could be up to speed on the latest edition over there. But some cool new stuff. Check it out over there if you haven't over there on the Bantix front. Quick Strike, Q-U-I-K. S-T-R-I-K-E. Just search for that. Of course, I think there is a, a a bug killer or something else out there with the same name. Obviously, we're not talking about that. If you want to find more, you go to Bantix.com. B-A-N-T-I-X.com. Click on the Quick Strike link there, and you're off to the races. So the Movers and Shakers report. What is lighting it up? Since I get to choose this week, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to say light side because why not? Everyone always thinks I'm going to go dark side. Let's go light side this week. Number five to the light side this week, we have Brent up. Two percent. And again, over there at CME, not a lot of Brent sliding back and forth over there. So probably gonna, not going to make it on our radar. In fact, our light side has a whole bunch of products that don't sling a lot of options, which makes it interesting. Number four, we've got oats up 5.76%. A good week for oats. Last week, it was up 12.76%. So still 7.6%, both two weeks. Interesting. And it was number three in the same direction last week. And again, before you ask, right around 100 contracts on the Oats tape this week. So not going to head out there. Number three, Platinum, up 5.93%. It was number five in the other direction last week, off nearly 2%. A little more paper, but still not a ton. About 1,500 contracts on the tape right now in Platinum. So I guess we could, comparatively, that's a lot (laughs) compared to these other two. So we could potentially hang out there, but not a lot to parse there. Number two, it's our old friend Lumber. This week, back to the upside, up 7.07%. It was number two in the same direction last week, up nearly 17% last week, 16.72%. And number one, yet another another week with iron ore. My goodness, up nearly 35%, 34%. And that's after it's been number one the last two weeks before it. And then last week, it was up another 21%. And this week, on top of that, you think, oh, it's got to be tapped out. Nope. Up nearly 35% this week. Good grief. That just makes it even more of a crime that there are no options going back and forth. How many people would love to be slinging options on a product that's moving 35% in a week? Hint. The answer is a lot of people. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to hang our hats out there as well. So an intriguing week. A lot of action to the upside. Unfortunately, not a lot of options action to go with all that underlying movement. Let's go to the dark side, see if we can find some better candidates there. Number five to the dark side this week, uh, the Ultra 10-year, off nearly 2%, about 1.84%. Again, before you ask, not really an option tsunami on the Ultra 10-year either. <laughs> Let's go to number four. Oh, the Euro dollars. There we go. They do a little bit of paper. We did a deep dive into Euro dollars last week. I do think we're going to bring uh, John back on and for all you folks out there who have questions, you know, the color schemes in euro dollars, how it's interesting. You could have multiple contracts all expiring at the same time across the spectrum of products there. A lot of things to parse and break down in euro dollars there that, that I know for a lot of you, you see the paper going up, you know, you should be paying attention to it, but you don't really know where to start. That might be a good thing to just do a, just a full breakdown of all things euro dollars. I think we're going to get that on the books in the coming months there, listeners. That way we could make it a little easier for those of you who are still kind of taking your first tentative steps into categories like the rates. By the way, John had a great recommendation for all of you newcomers last week. He thought the Fed funds was a great starter product, and I concur. That is a good one. So 
if you're just starting in rates, Euro dollars is not where you should start. But I know for a lot of you, it does a lot of paper. It, it's 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 like a moth to the flame. You can't ignore it. You just don't know what the heck you're looking at. So that would be a good product to do a deep dive in. And this week, off 3.85%. It was number three in the same direction last week, off six and a quarter percent. Number three, Nat gas. All right, we're getting to some products that do some paper now. 6.58% to the dark side this week. It was number five. In the other direction last week, up 6.76%. So it pretty much gave back all that it got last week. Uh, Palladium, number two, off 6.63%. It was number one in this direction last week, off nearly 8%, 7.8%. Again, before you get all excited, about 400 contracts on the tape in Palladium. And number one to the dark side this week, ye old BTC, a.k.a. Bitcoin, off nearly seven and three quarters percent, about 7.72% to be precise. Again, you know the deal. If you've been listening to our Crypto Rundown program, you know, not a heck of a lot of paper to parse, usually under 100 contracts a day out there in Bitcoin land, even though it has been ticking up, but still not a ton to parse out there in Bitcoin. So given the dearth of hot options products that we have available to us in our movers and shakers this week, going to be kind of a dealer's choice, but I am going to start with the big dog to the dark side that alone a lot of you have been paying attention to. We talked a lot about last week as well. Let's go out to energy first. It's time to tap into the deep options well of black gold, Texas tea, nat gas, and more. It's time to talk energy. All right, everybody. Welcome to energy. Of course, to find this, head on over to seemegroup.com slash twifo, T-W-I-F-O, or slash twio, T-W-I-O. Both of those should get you to these reports. Those reports are completely for free. Go to the drop down there. Go on down to the energy sector. It's right below ags and crypto. And then you'll see a bunch of different products in the product family category. Go to Nat Gas and then go to the top one there. And then you'll find our old friend Natural Gas, which you'll see coming into today's show. Shy of the five handle, 494 is where we find ourselves out there today. Off about 3.2% this week. And again, net since our show last week off. 6.6% 6.6% almost. So a bit of a dark side there to Nat Gas. That's interesting because coming on the heels of last week's show, we were talking about how Nat Gas was just on fire. This European shortage was really spilling over into other parts of the world. The notion that U.S. Nat Gas in particular was not this isolated, siloed product the way it used to be. Uh, the global nature of our economy and the, even the growing global nature of Nat Gas. We are exporting a lot of it these days has started to increase those correlations. They used to be only about 50%, now getting much higher between, let's say, the European market and the U.S. market. But so that might surprise you that we are selling off a little bit today and again this week. And then, of course, we have pieces like Bloomberg coming out today because Citi making some noise out there in the Nat Gas front. And, of course, all the headlines, Bloomberg, everyone else running with, Citi isn't ruling out natural gas at $100 in a frigid renter. Now, you might look at that and say, $100, we're at $494. What the hell? A little bit of a different beast. Uh, let's parse that a little bit. Of course, the article here, I'm looking at the Bloomberg one in particular, uh, city analyst saying that gas prices could continue to go parabolic in the coming weeks and months. They have more than doubled their Asian and European nat gas forecasts for the next quarter. They also said, if unusually cold weather boosts demand and key key combo there and hurricanes in the u.s gulf of mexico disrupt supplies cargoes could trade in the 100 dollar range or 580 a barrel if you do oil equivalent terms they said out there so you might be saying whoa 100 (laughs) dollars we're trading sub five bucks is everybody loading up on let's say the 50 calls out there and no we're not seeing that action and we are seeing a sell-off so obviously people are seeing this headline and freaking out some of you have written to us about this And it's a different beast. Obviously, remember, Nat Gas is not like Apple stock. Apple stock, you know, you buy Apple. Apple is pretty much the same price, whether you buy it in Mississippi, whether you buy it in Denver, whether you buy it in California. It's trading where it's trading, and that's it. Nat Gas is a different beast. It's a very localized phenomenon. You have distribution. You have pipelines. You have, you know, tankers that are routing these things all over. So they're talking about a very specific disruption in some of these localized markets where let's say a pipeline gets destroyed by a hurricane or some other severe natural disaster comes through and disrupts a lot of this flow. Then in that very localized environment there where they need 
to get nat gas and everything is destroyed or disrupted. In those environments, we could see spikes upward of, let's say, $100, as I say in the report. That doesn't mean the big contract floating around here trading. Let's see, how many contracts did it put up this week so far? Nat gas on CME has traded, oh, 643,000 contracts this week. That doesn't mean that's going to hit the $100 level. So a little bit of a different thing. It, these headlines sometimes get misconstrued by people. And they get all fired. It doesn't mean you should come in and load up on the 50 or 75 calls before the end of the year. That would not be uh, the trade you want to make. Speaking of trading, let's see what is trading out here. Nat gas trading kind of like an equity. As again, we've seen a lot of movements week to week. So that's not exactly surprising that 32, almost 33% of the paper of that 600,000 contracts, nearly a third going up in a contract that goes out in four days. <laughs> so we're going to go a little bit farther out, listeners. We're going to go out to the November contract, because that still did about 22% of the paper. So nearly a quarter of the paper went up out there. And that has 33 days to go. I don't feel like parsing a contract that goes away in four days, because all these numbers we talk about, ball, skew, they're all pretty much meaningless in a contract that is that near dated listener. So said, let's go out to the November contract. If you're wondering, vol, out there, by the way, November contract, that future is at pretty much exactly $5 right now, 5.01 to be precise, so a little bit higher. And we have, let's see, the vol. I mean, NatGas, obviously a very volatile contract. It has been moving quite a bit of late out there. And the at the money vol in that November contract, 67 and a quarter. But that's down seven and a quarter points from this time last week, listeners. So that vol still juicy. You're still talking 3X small cap vol, pretty much, or close to it. And, you know, of course, we have VIX below a 20 handles. So you're talking more than 3X on the VIX front as well. So again, everyone who's a little bit, ah, I can't find the vol I want. Maybe earlier this week you had it in the equities. Not so much right now. Nat gas is still a very frothy, very volatile product. In terms of skew, last week, let's see, the puts were 5.3% cheap out here. This week, they're 8.7% cheap. So the puts getting cheaper out there in November, which again, kind of supports this not a lot of downside concern out there right now. All the interest, all the concern is to the upside. Last week, the calls were 6.1% rich. This week, pretty much the same level, 6% rich still. So kind of unched on the call. So that does kind of support the hypothesis that we're going probably to the upside before we go to the dark side. I don't think we're hitting 100, but something maybe north of the five handle could be in the offing again. In terms of where the action was this week, what was the most active contract? It was the five call there in October going out in four days, doing pretty much 26,000 contracts this week. That was the most active contract. And again, that's, that's a fair amount of paper. That's more than some of your medals, a lot of your medals actually out there <laughs> in the complex. So uh, just in that five call, let's see the most active day today of that five call with about almost 13,000. So pretty much half of that 26,000. Going up today, the other big day was Tuesday with about 8,000. The rest kind of scattered throughout the week. So a lot of action on that five call. It makes sense. We're flirting with that five strike above it, below it, above it, below it. It makes sense that that five call would have a lot of back and forth opening and closing paper throughout the week. Let's see. Right behind it, the five quarter calls with about 18,300. Again, the big day today, about 12,500. I wonder if some verticals are perhaps being taken off out there today. Similar size paper on the fives and the five quarters, both a little bit north of 12,000 contracts on the tape. After that, the five quarters, they didn't trade much else. So about 2,000 contracts a day each day throughout the rest of the week. So the big day clearly today. Then let's go out to some puts. There are some puts lighting up as well. The four half puts, about 17,500 on the tape. The big day for those actually was Tuesday. 6,000 on the tape on Tuesday, 4,500 on Monday, about 4,000 today. Again, back and forth, slightly opening and closing all week long. Not a huge change on that strike, which is kind of interesting because it's going the way of the dodo fairly soon. Let's go a little bit farther out. Again, just to support what we were talking about earlier, we are not seeing 75 calls or 50 calls or any of this kind of outlandish nonsense going up here, listeners. It's all still in this relatively, you know, four to five plus dollar range where most of the action is. Uh, four puts also lighting it up out there in March of next year to the tune of 12,000 contracts almost exactly this week. Let's see the lion's share of those also today. Today, a big day for Nat Gas. Uh, let's see, 7,500 of that, that about 12,000 contracts going up today. The rest kind of scattered throughout the week. And again, back and forth throughout most of the week. So 
a very active product and a very active day out there in NatGas. I'm just trying to scroll really quickly, see if I do see any of those weird aberrant prints. We are seeing the 940 calls, and that is that is an interesting strike out there. I wonder if there have been some adjustments out there for next year. Uh, the Feb 940 calls are trading this week 4,300 times. They traded 3,300 times on Monday. About 1,000 of that was opening, so not all opening. And then about 1,000 more on Wednesday, those were opening. Uh, Worth noting, the 920s also traded 2,300 times on Monday. Those are strange strikes. I'm not sure what's going on with those strikes or who's trading them out there, but nonetheless. And the 920s also traded 1,000 times on Wednesday as well. So looks like we do have a bit of a very weirdly tight vertical. 920, 940, going up 3,300 times on the 920s and 4,300 times on the 940s, again, out in February of next year. That's not quite 100, but that is that is a pretty lofty level for nat gas. I'll have to dig a little bit further to see what could possibly be, be going up against that because that is an interesting, some might say, outlandish strike. So then again, so everyone's looking for other products. I'm not saying you should dive right into Nat Gas. You should familiarize yourself with it first, obviously, but it does a lot of paper. If you start feeling comfortable at the levels that it trades around, the vol, the skew, things like that, it is a fairly liquid product. So you could do worse than diving out into this if for some reason you prefer this over, let's say, a regular stalwart like WTI, then that could be a good place to go. Speaking of WTI, since we're hanging out out there in the energy complex, listeners, Let's go one notch above. Let's go out from Nat Gas and let's click on the crude oil really quickly. It isn't on our movers and shakers this week, but not a lot of what is actually does any options paper. So we get to do a little bit of fun dealer's choice this week. And we always know WTI is pretty active. We also know a lot of you out there pay attention to this market in particular. And we're seeing right now that future in WTI, we're back in the 70 handle, listeners, 73 and a quarter, up 2%. Just this week. And in terms of action, we are seeing some decent paper out here. 452,000 contracts on the tape right now. So it's not on our movers and shakers, but it is putting up some numbers this week, listeners. And let's see what's going on out here. The most active contract is the D's contract. 37% of that 452,000 contracts going up in the December contract. That vol, if you're wondering, about a 31 and two thirds, up about half a point this week. So Still pretty frothy, still more volatile than all the equities you're going to look at out there these days in terms of the large indexes. And let's see, skew-wise, last week the put 6.1% rich. This week, 9.2%. So that's a pretty strong bid creeping in there for the puts. It's not quite equity levels. <laughs> you're talking the puts out there are 25 30% bid over the at-the-money vol. But then again, you're talking a much lower level of volatility. You're talking in the 20s or in the teens versus in the 30s. So a little bit of a different beast, but still 9.2% bid to the puts. That does show the interest, the concern these days is to the downside calls last week, 2.7% cheap. This week, getting cheaper, 5.7% cheap. So calls coming in, puts getting bid. That's the old question everyone likes to ask. What's the skew telling us out there in WTI? And right now it's telling us, downward is the area of concern and interest going forward through December. What was the leading contract this week? The most active contract? It was the DS 85s listeners. That's not perhaps the strike I would have expected. DS 85s doing 26,200 contracts again today, the big day out there, 12,600 today, Yesterday, 11,156 of that 10,000. So a lot of opening on the DS 85s yesterday, maybe peering some of that back today. I obviously don't have today's uh, OI change numbers. You have to wait for those. Also, the 84 is trading yesterday as well. 10,200 of those yesterday, another 10,000 today. So the 84s and 85s, very active today. The 84s and DS doing 20,300 contracts. The 85s doing 26,200 this week. So pretty active week here for the upside in December. In fact, we have to go pretty far out to find anything else that is even close. That's a pretty tight vertical if that was indeed a vertical. But it's hard to find. The ratios don't make sense if there was some sort of other contract against it. It would be a funky ratio. It would not be a standard fly or even a 
twofer or a threefer out here. So intriguing stuff here in the upside in WTI. The next most active contract, we actually have to go back here to November, to the November 72s, a far more relevant strike. (laughs) These things this week did almost 13,000 contracts. The lion's share was Monday, 7,300 on Monday, almost 4,000 on Wednesday, and kind of scattered paper throughout the rest of the week. A good chunk of that Monday paper was opening. So opening on the 72s, again, that makes a little bit more sense. That's pretty close to the the at-the-money strike right there. That's more along the lines of what I expected, but also about half the paper of what we were seeing on those weird, funky, Deese upside trades. So not at all what I expected. Then we have the 77s in November also doing, let's see here, also doing about 11,000 contracts. The big day for them also Monday, about 6,700. And then yesterday, about 3,800 and not much going on the rest of the week out there. So intriguing strikes, not perhaps what I would have thought. You know, I always like to look for a little bit farther afield, a little bit funkier. Usually it's to the upside paper in WTI. We are seeing some of that, listeners. June of next year, the June pars traded pretty firmly this week, 8,717 times. Again, the June pars, that's the 100 strike, listeners. 5,300 today and 3,300 yesterday. Yesterday's paper was opening. Probably going to assume today's is as well, but we don't have those numbers. Also worth noting the 90s. And the 80s traded, uh, let's see, this week. The 90s traded twenty about 3,400 times total in the week. And the 80s traded about 2,000 times. So, again, it's not the ratio of a standard fly the way you would normally do it. <laughs> the, the ratio leg is on the pars, if that is indeed the case. But uh, intriguing stuff here with about, again, 8,700 of the par calls trading in June of next year here. Interesting, interesting stuff. Are you intrigued by that trade? Do you like that more as a second leg, perhaps, of a vertical spread? Maybe buying, let's say, the 80s, selling the pars, buying the 75, something along those lines. It does seem like there was some vertical action. Again, the 90s and the 80s were also trading out here. But again, the ratios are a wee bit funky, if to put it mildly, out here. <laughs> Any other weird? All the par calls also trading in Dece of 2023. So that's a little bit farther out. Could make a little bit more sense, but uh, we do like to see some of that upside trading throughout the week. But you know what? It's one of those weird weeks. Not a lot lighting it up out there on our movers and shakers. So again, dealer's choice. Let's head on out to another category, another complex you folks like to sling and certainly ask questions about. Let's head on out to the equities next. It's time to explore the volatility swings, skew changes, and hot options trades in your favorite indices. It's time to talk equities. All right, everybody. Welcome to the equities. You know where to go to find this. Go back to that drop down. Go out to equity indexes. Then go to U.S. Index E-mini at the top under the product family. Under product. Let's start with the big dog. Let's start with the E-mini S&P 500 itself, also known as pretty much uh, the last man standing out there in the E-mini product category out there. You know, it was a time you had the big futures, you had the options, and those were the big dogs. And the E-mini came to roost and kind of been cannibalizing all that beast. Now we have the micros, the latest edition out there. So a lot of interesting stuff afoot out there in the world. Of equity options, let's go on out. Before we do all things equity options, you're talking equities. You can't really escape talking about volatility as well. So let's kick it off. Starting there, again, as I mentioned, the beginning of the week was a very sordid tale on the vol front, on the equity front. We kicked off the week with a pretty aggressive sell-off. Most of the major indices off over 2% at one point before mitigating that somewhat towards the end of the day. We saw Vol popping VIX, all the other ones popping by about eight points. So a big day, big sell-off, big pop in volatility. As the week has progressed, we have seen that sell-off mitigate, and now the markets are once again back in the green mode. We're seeing RVX, so the VIX of small caps. Again, a lot of our Vol, I said this on the option block earlier, a lot of it's back to pretty much where it was at the end of last week. So we're kind of unched on a lot of these products here. The RBX is about 24.95, so right around 25, down about a third of a point from where it was this time last week. A VIX cash coming at the showtime was at about 18 and a half. That puts it down again, about a third of a point from where it was this time last week. So that spread is not going to move much. 
Both of them pretty much moving in lockstep this week. Uh, VVIX at about 109 coming at the showtime, down about, oh, five or six points. But again, VVIX moves quite a bit. And that's, that's not a huge move for what we've seen. We saw VVIX pop 30 odd points on Monday. So five points is really a rounding error in VVIX land. That, of course, is the volatility of volatility, if you're not familiar with that, listeners. Then Vol Q, the at the money vol of the NASDAQ 100 coming at showtime is at about a 17 and a quarter. That one has moved a little bit, down a little bit over a point, almost one and a quarter points from this time last week. So the VIX of RBX spread, so the large cap to small cap vol spread, was at about almost six and a half. That's effectively unched from where it was this time last week. Uh, the VIX to vol Q, that's about one and a quarter points wider than what it was this time last week. So pretty big move out there as we're seeing, of course, vol Q moving and VIX kind of staying in about the same spot it was. This time last week. Let's go on out now to the big dog. See what's lighting it up. When I say the big dog, E-mini, it does some numbers, listeners. 2.7 million contracts on the tape right now. That's a lot of you have been mentioning, even Uncle Mike mentioning on our option block show. The E-mini, not so many anymore. These levels of the S&P 500. (laughs) It's still a pretty beefy contract. Hence, probably the feeding frenzy that has been the micros out there. Let's break down some of the action in the now current big dog. Funny to say that out loud, but that's where we are in the E-mini right now. 44, 48, 75 coming into showtime, listeners. Up 27 handles, or about six-tenths of a percent on the week. Again, getting back a lot of that sell-off that we lost earlier in the week. And once again, as with most equities, 27.5% of the paper is going up in the contract that goes away tomorrow. So we have to go a little bit farther out, listeners. Let's go. Usually I like to say two weeks, but you're missing a lot of the paper if you go that far out in in E-mini. Even though we can go to a contract, the next most active month, actually, month I say, but it's a weekly, the week three October contract that did, let's see, about 16% of the paper this week and it has 22 days to go. So we can't hang out there just to get a little bit saner measure of what is afoot out there. And let's see, the the vol out there, if you're wondering, <laughs> 1385. So coming right back down, one and three quarters points there. So again, we were just talking about nat gas vol in the 60s, WTI vol somewhere in the 30-odd range. And now E-mini, 1385. Again, not much vol to be found out there right now. In the equities, in terms of skew, this again, talking about that premium to the puts. We were talking about this on our option block show earlier today as well. That premium has not really decreased, despite the fact that we had the sell-off this week. We bounced right back. So those puts are still bid. In fact, they're more bid than they were this time last week, at least from a percentage basis. The puts last week, 24.7% rich. This week, 34.5%. I mean, again, you're starting from a much lower baseline. You're only talking a 1385 vol. But still, from a percentage basis, that's that's a huge bid. To those puts that's that's hard to make work in your favor if you are buying those listeners because if you buy them and even if you see the sell-off you still don't usually get the bang for the buck on those puts because they've already been bid up so much as makes it challenging to trade those bad boys if you want to use them as a hedging tool in terms of calls 15.2 percent cheap last week and this week 23 and a half percent cheap man they have come for these calls they do not want to touch calls listeners so again your traditional equity skew, but turned up to 11 here. This is why numbers like the skew index and everything else are pretty much hovering at or around all-time highs because these puts are so ridiculously bid. These calls are offered. No one wants to touch them, which is fascinating out there. In terms of the most active contract in the E-minis, it was the, again, not the strike I would have picked, the 3,700 puts going away tomorrow doing 91 thousand contracts this week my goodness they opened this is an interesting one something must be afoot here they opened <laughs> eighty six thousand six hundred and twenty five of them traded yesterday pretty much all of that was opening and then thirty three thousand going up today i have to assume maybe some of that is closing but looks like i mean again that's a ridiculous strike it looks like 3,600 puts also traded about 17,000 times. Again, that ratio, and then also 17,000 on the 34 halves. But that ratio still makes no sense. 17,000 versus 86,000 
on the 3,700 puts. That would be a 3,600, 3,700, 34 half. 17,000 by <laughs> 17,000 by 87,000. That ratio makes zero sense. So someone was opening for size on the 3,700 puts. Again, these have a day to go, listeners. And these are over 700 handles out of the money. So I'm not sure what was a foot down there, but an absurd out of the money put skew trade here in these puts. We have seen this before when we've dug into the E mini. Some of these outlandish strikes you would not normally consider with a day to go would be lighting it up. Yet that's what we're seeing. This, this merits, I think, some further investigation. We'll have to come back to this one and see exactly what is going on. There has to be some other leg against this. It's just the ratios we're seeing make very little sense. So something odd is afoot in very, very far out of the money. Uh, E-mini, S&P, options. Hmm. That's all I can say to that one is, hmm, <laughs> technical term. I need to dig into that some more to see exactly what is afoot. Who is slinging? The, and, and for opening, opening size, hmm. you know, some people back in the day, if we were close to an expiration and something else, you might think of carpet bombing. But that's not going to work here. And it's not we're not near the VIX expiration anyway. So it's over two on both of those. Yet if you saw these in some of the other S&P products, you might think something along those lines. But hmm, that's not what's afoot here. So it's just, that's an interesting one. They might have to come back to that. Maybe we'll even try to squeeze it into oddities if we have time here. But that's. That's a bizarre one because that that outdistances everything else in a very active product. Other than that, we have the 44 halves, which are, again, pretty much the at the money strike. You'd expect that. 34,000 of those trading this week. We have the 4,300 puts, slightly out of the money puts, 30,100 of those. We have the 4,460 calls, slightly out of the money calls, doing about 22,000. All the rest are strikes you would probably expect. And yet, not so much here in the front month. Worth noting also, we do have 3,800 puts trading in the week two uh, October contract going up. That's only 10,000 times. That's nowhere near the numbers we're seeing on these 3,700 puts. So have you been watching these listeners? Do you see these go up? Do you have a theory? Hit us up. Let us know. These are intriguing, I think, to say the least. <laughs> puts. Also worth noting, here we go. We also have D3600 puts going up. 58,624 times. But again, different days. All of those went up on Monday. And those were opening as well. So it's not a roll because the roll would be closing on the contract that goes out in one day. And instead, they were opening with one day to go, which makes it doubly strange. We saw 56,000 of the 3,600 puts in Dece going up on Monday. Also, 41,000 of the 4,000 puts going up so a bit of a vertical perhaps there they traded a total of about 60,000 by 50,000 both of those strikes this week but all of that most of it was on Monday there but again that's that those are opening as well so there was no rolling action here it was opening on both legs they were indeed related trades and it was a different day on top of it so it doesn't seem like that was the driving factor in those near dated puts funky stuff afoot here listeners we could spend the rest of the day parsing it. We also have to head on out to the land of small caps. If you do that, listeners, go out to that U.S. Index E-mini. That's the product family. Go into the product category and then scroll on down from the E-mini S&P 500 and get on into the E-mini Russell 2000. And that's where we're hanging our hat next. The small caps, 2257 coming into showtime, up about 1.3% on the week. So small caps rebounding a little bit more aggressively than what we're seeing out there in the rest of the space. Also seeing, again, structurally more volatile, about 25 and a half in that front contract that goes away tomorrow. So take that with a grain of salt. Also worth noting, 33% uh, of the paper went up there. By the way, decent paper this week, about 27,000 contracts on the tape. So again, it's not the E-mini S&P 500, but it's been growing over time out there in the small caps. As a lot of people, just judging by your reactions and listening to you folks here on the network and seeing your feedback, a lot more of you have started to discover Small caps and what you can do with them in particular, the upside calls, a lot of you seem fixated out there. Let's see if that's the case this week. The most active contract, yeah, it is actually. Once again, the we're at about 2257 right now. The most active contract out here this week, listeners, are the DEES 24 halves. We got a few thousand of those going up this week. 
which again, not terribly small delta, but they are pretty small. And it looks like pretty much all of that went up today. So a couple of hundred going out earlier this week, but the rest all going up today. So, and again, no other vertical legs against this. So just straight 24 halves in Dees. That's interesting. And again, that goes back to some of the paper that when Matt's been on the show from Orats and he likes to watch the skew and break down what he terms the small delta calls, that's the kind of paper he likes to watch. And it does seem like it's lighting it up out there again today. 200 handle out of the money paper here in the small cap listeners. You like that? Would you be a buyer or would you be more of an overwriter at that level? I'll have to look and see what kind of premium they're getting for those because that's an interesting strike. Let's go out to Deese then because I know a lot of the paper is going out this week. But this Deese trade is intriguing me here. The ball, by the way, if you're wondering, 22 on the Deese contract. So a little bit lighter than what we're seeing in that those front couple of weeks. In terms of the skew, similar deal to what we're seeing in the S&P. Not quite as pronounced to the puts. The puts are 20% bid last week and they're 20% bid this week. The calls last week, 14.2% cheap. Last week, 14.6%. So again, it was really that big trade on the 24 halves that lit it up. And we don't have much of a skew change, so it's hard to really intuit just from that what happened on these calls. And of course, they went up today, so we have no insight into the open interest yet. So interesting stuff afoot here. It looks like it probably is, again, what we've seen a lot here is optimistic buying. <laughs> You've also seen the other side of that is usually far out of the money put trading. We don't see as much of that this week. It seems like it's mostly calls uh, going out this week. We have the 22 halves, which are pretty much in the money calls now, lighting it up. And that's pretty much 22 halves. And most of the months, that seems to be where the lion's share of the action was. Someone traded about 100 of the 1,000 puts <laughs> this week in November. That's a interesting strike. That's a small delta put if ever I've seen one. Uh, not a ton of them, but some. So intriguing stuff afoot out there. but. Uh, Not enough to really merit, and certainly not as many as these 24 half calls in December. That seems to be where the lion's share of the action is out here this week in all things Russell 2000. Let's look really quickly here, a quick overview of our movers and shakers again. Oats, not a lot to parse there. Lumber, iron ore, I wish. All these, platinum, most of these are not really doing much from an options perspective. But you know what is doing a lot? Actually, you folks hitting us up with some of your questions. So let's get out there next. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for Futures Options Feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at the options you can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider Radio Network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M I X L R.com. All right, a bunch of you chiming in. Let's get to some of you. First, we have our secret club member, Chris Lovell. He says, Dear Mark, loving all the Q&A sessions as well as the Friday oddity sessions with Andrew. Well, glad you're liking it. A lot of you folks out there in the secret club seem to be enjoying and getting a lot of value from the content. He says, but please don't forget about Mystery Schlesinger's offer to do a blackjack special for the pro members. Thanks for all the great content. Ciao, Chris. Well, we didn't forget, Chris. In fact, you were not alone. A lot of your fellow Secret Club members sent in similar missives to us saying, hey, what about that offer to do that deep dive, that Hall of Fame level blackjack? You know, Don is a Hall of Famer in the blackjack as well as a noted author in there. He doesn't just trade short ball. He's big, big in the blackjack. I think blackjack actually got him into trading. That's kind of his starting point there. So he's noted in that space. And so we thought, hey, let's let's you guys want it. It's your club at the end of the day. You guys get to dictate where it goes. So we brought Don was more than willing to come back, and we did that just this week, and it was fascinating. Again, I'm not a huge blackjack guy, but there was a lot in there for everyone of all skill levels. If if you're even remotely intrigued, if you ever plan to sit down sometime in the next decade and play a few hands of blackjack at a table somewhere, there is definitely something in that session for you, let alone 
higher level stuff there. So that was really interesting. Again, we don't normally do blackjack, but you guys asked for it. And so we brought it to you. And that was fascinating. In terms of bang for your buck, we've had a lot of great sessions. That one, I can't imagine most of our listeners will get something out of that that they could use to make money or at the very least avoid losing money at the table sometime down the road, their listeners. So hope you enjoyed that, Chris. You were one of the many who asked for it. And I know judging from your feedback, a lot of you did enjoy it. Again, if you missed it, you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That'll get you access to the one we just did this week and all the other. We have 17 now, these pro Q&As. All the leading minds in the world of derivatives, not just Don talking blackjack. We have Dan Gramza, someone you folks are very familiar with on this show. He was in the hot seat there. We had Scott Nations, the creator of VolQ, talking about a lot of volatility and fun stuff in there. We had Jack Schwager, who created the Market Wizard series. So a lot of great stuff for you folks to check out and a whole bunch more over there, as well as our Options Oddity show every Friday. We break down unusual activity. It's a fun time. So check it out if you haven't done so already. Hopefully, Chris... You enjoyed the session that you asked for. <laughs> All right, next up, Vader. Great handle, Vader. Vader just wants to know, are there any hot products that don't do much options paper now, but you think should be on people's radar as future hot prospects? Well, yeah, there's a lot that could fall into that category. I will skip the obvious answers of things like lumber and iron ore, because I don't think you need me to point you in the direction of those. I, I wish, I wish wholeheartedly that both of those did some more paper because, quite frankly, they'd be fascinating to break down. They're moving so much. But both of those are not ones we can really parse, really, to any degree here on the show. But let's go beyond those obvious ones. One of the complexes I've mentioned a few times here on the show, and one that, you know, has popped up more and more on my radar of late. And whenever we do those cross-correlation analyses of different complexes, and also when we're just scanning for volatility movers, volatility changes out there. It's a complex that doesn't get a lot of love, but is starting to do a lot more paper. And just in general, that makes it more interesting to options traders out there. We're talking uh, good old friend dairy, in particular, class three milk. Of course, as I say that now, it's kind of a quiet week. Only a couple of thousand contracts on the tape out there. But compare that to... What it used to do, that's a heck of a lot. And there are weeks where it does a lot more out there. So this is an interesting product. I'm not saying you should dive into dairy by any means right now. It still is kind of a trade by appointment type product, but it is growing. It is evolving. The liquidity is getting higher out there. The vol is in about a 22 range right now. So it's similar to what we're seeing out there in the equities. I'm looking at it right now as well. We're seeing interesting skew out there. The bid is to the calls and the puts are Puts are kind of non-existent, and it's all to the calls out there, which is interesting. So a little bit different from the equities from that perspective. And it does some paper. Like I said, we're at about an eight, excuse me, 16 half in uh, Class 3 milk this week. And we're seeing decent prints out here in the 17 half calls, doing a few hundred here or there, and 16 puts and other things lighting it up. Again, it's not Euro dollars yet, but it's growing. It's been on the radar for a while. And one of these ones, again, doesn't get a lot of love but is, I think, something that down the road will be doing a lot more paper. I think we'll see more products in there, and we're seeing, we'll see venues and others like CME try to have more, I think, retail-friendly stuff for a lot of you out there. And that's a product, I think, down the road, I would not be surprised to see on the radar of a lot of you out there. Another one that we talked about a little bit more on the show of late. I think we talked about it when, when Eric was on and when Russell was on. It comes on the radar every now and then. And again, this is another one that not that long ago was kind of a also ran from an options perspective. But these days is doing some paper. It's got about 10,000 contracts on the tape this week, which is nothing to sneeze at out there. This is copper. Again, when we first started doing this show, we couldn't really talk about copper. It would do 1,000, maybe a couple of thousand contracts if you had a really good week out there. But these days, copper really lighting it up out there, trading four and a quarter right now off about a third of a percent. But again, about 10,000 contracts on the tape this week, including the 360 puts doing about 1,300 contracts. That was the big dog out there this week. So still no E-mini, but it's it's doing more paper, and it's worth noting. Now, the only issue really with copper is that it is very much the surrogate for Chinese demand, so you have to view it through that light. It has this one primary driver, and that tends to dictate what happens out there. So that's that's interesting. That may put you off it, or that may intrigue you more, depending on your viewpoint out there. But copper is another one that's kind of been growing on my radar. 
I feel more comfortable working it into the conversation on the show here these days because it has a decent amount of paper to actually sink our teeth into out here. So those are the two that I would watch. I think Class Three Milk is the more of the outlier of those two. Some of you may be familiar already uh, with Copper. But those are the ones I've been keeping an eye on. I, they pop up on my scans more frequently. I look at them more. They have more interesting correlations when we do those correlation scans. And again, if you're out there, if you have the premium tools on Quick Strike and you want to start running some of these cross-correlation scans for yourselves, you should be doing that. It is interesting and surprising to see how these products relate to each other. You see relationships you would never probably expect popping up in an otherwise products you might think would be cl- more closely linked than they actually are in real life. So a lot of interesting stuff there. That's for the, the premium users over there. On the quick strike, Brian wants to know, can you get a breakdown of CME crypto on the show this week? Thanks for all that you do. Well, Brian, thankfully for you, we have a show that we do all that on every Monday after the option block, 2 p.m. Central or on demand on all of your devices under the sun. It's called the Crypto Rundown. And we do all that. We break down a lot of stuff going on on the big platforms like Deribit. Those are usually the leading platforms for crypto options. But CME, a growing player out there. As I mentioned at the top of the show, it's continuing to grow. It's still not lighting it up. I mean, you get, you're struggling to get 100 contracts a day out there in the big Bitcoin options. And that's still the case this week. You're seeing about 462 contracts on the tape. So if that holds course for the rest of the week then we won't even be at the 100 a day. But again, so far, at least for coming into today, we are seeing more than 100 a day. So that's good. But again, this is a 5X beefy contract. It's not really for everyone. And for most of the listeners of this show, I don't think this contract is really ever going to be in the conversation. We need to get these micros going. That's kind of where the action is. And unfortunately, there are no options on those yet. So the micros have been doing a little bit more paper Lately, we've seen the Bitcoin futures not doing much paper at around 6,000 contracts a day, which isn't a ton. They have done a lot more than that in the past. We're seeing the micros doing somewhere in the 12 to 15,000 contracts a day. So that's better. And then once we start seeing more of that volume coming in on the underlying, we'll start seeing the options. We'll get Tim back on here to break down when they're going to launch them, and it'll be a good time for all of us. So that'll be, I think, where we can start sinking our teeth into those. But for now, Seeing this roughly 100 contracts a day out there on the big options, that's a good sign that it's heading in the right direction, but it's still got a long way to go before it even catches up to fluid milk, let alone to copper, let alone to the euro dollars out there. All right, everybody, that music means we're come to the end. Kind of a just the facts, ma'am, edition. Uh, These are always fun ones when all of our movers and shakers don't really do a lot of options paper. It gives us a lot more freedom to expand our purview a little bit. And of course, if you folks have questions, just like Brian or Vader or Chris, everybody else did today, you know where to find us at Options on most of the major social media platforms. Questions at theoptionsinsider.com also works. If you're in the secret club, you can, of course, ask your questions live. You get bumped to the top of the list. Also, the members hotline there. Get at us. And you guys always bump to the top of the list over there. Of course, that concludes our broadcast day for today. We'll be back again tomorrow. Noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern to break down the week that was. Oh, what a week it has been. From a vol perspective, a lot to talk about tomorrow. We'll get to that on vol views. Noon Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Then back again. What a week it has been for unusual activity as well. We'll have a lot to parse on options oddities for you folks in the Secret Club. 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. Then we're back again next Thursday. Another episode of Twifo. See you then. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options.
This Week in Futures Options is also brought to you by FTSE Russell, a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. Investors in the U.S. and around the world are using FTSE Russell indexes to benchmark their investment performance and create investment funds, ETFs, structured products, and index-based derivatives. Many Options Insider Radio Network listeners will be familiar with the Russell 2000 Index. Russell 2000 Futures and Options are currently trading on the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME group. For more information, please visit ftserussell.com, cboe.com, and cmegroup.com. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 